There's a 1.88% increase here. The majority of these lines are all related to wages mostly. Uh, the only thing that, they're all related to wages. The only thing that can be adjusted, I guess, would, I don't really know, employee separation costs, we could adjust that if we wanted to, but we also, based on, on who we think is gonna retire, I do a calculation by reaching out to the department heads and finding out who's eligible to retire, have they heard about anyone planning to retire, and we put percentages on everyone's head, so to speak, who's eligible to retire to see who, how we think they're gonna fall, and that's kind of how we come up with that number. All of the other things, um, are driving factors, Social Security, Medicare, retirement. I will report here that the New Hampshire retirement rates did go down slightly for July 1 of 19, so wow. that helped that budget a little bit. And the other thing that's in here, which I skipped right over on accident, was the merit pay. That line is put in um, all the non-union and including the planning this year, as Jason was mentioning, I believe the board had decided that, and conservation, and I put that in for 2% across the board on all of the non-union. People just might not realize what employee, employee separation costs mean. Okay, so employee separation cost is if when someone is eligible to retire, um, it would be their sick and vacation payout, so to speak. Yeah. So depending on whether they're retiring or just quitting, it would and their union contracts would depend on, would dictate to us whether they get 25%, 50, 100, or 0% of their sick or vacation time. So, but most of the individuals, if they're eligible to retire, you will find that they do get 100% of their sick and vacation balances that are on the books. Mm. Okay, so on the merit pay raises, that includes a 2% for all non-unions next year. With the exception. With, the plan with both the planner and the... Uh, the planner, the office manager, and the planning department, and the conservation coordinator. Those are the three new ones that are added. That does not include your town manager right. or your assistant town manager because they've never been on... I shouldn't say never. They have not been on that line for the past couple of years. I believe the board... Uh, chose a few years ago to, if they were going to adjust the manager or town manager salary to put it on their uh, regular wage line. Mm. All right, since we're not going to be approving any budgets tonight, I'm just going to bring this up right now because I've been thinking about it. The 27202 that we that we've been using in the past to give, determine whatever it is, 2% raise, 1% raise, whatever we decide. But rather than continuing to do that, could we maybe at some point try to use that line item that's already in the budget to try to catch some other people up? I believe the board has the right to use that line however they choose, but Fred would have a better answer to that. If you're going to reclassify employees, you would normally put that wage in their actual, in their actual wage category in the actual department because it will never make it there if you use this line item as a problem. Like, I think it makes more sense the way we put the town manager and the manager in their actual line items. That's just me, but, well, you know? So maybe okay. not, I mean, we can't obviously jump the gun on this because we are in a pro, this well, is the process guys, that we've been the, using. Yeah, but I mean, just, I think the board could do, if they chose to, though, they could move the merit onto individual budget lines, correct, Fred? Like take yeah. that 27 and disperse it? You could. Around? You could. The, the 27 gives you an earmark to where you're going to go. In a couple of instances, it has not been satisfactory enough because, of course, it changes from year to year depending on who's in there. Right. Uh, and sometimes that changes because you have new employees come in at a lower rate right. and things, things adjust. So um, that money really, after you've spent it out of this line, goes into the line where their pay is. Yeah. Right. So, and so why not budgets. just have it there to begin with? <laughs> yeah, well, you can. I mean, you know, that's, that's what... I'm just saying maybe to think about in the future. I, I think Jim has mentioned that before. I think the reason yeah. it's here is because you don't want to assume that you're automatically going to grant it. Because the MRI study that we had done notes that some of our employees are already pretty much okay Correct. or above the okay point, but we still have quite a few that are a lot lower. So we could spend some time trying to get everyone up 
to that middle range. I thought we pretty. But much I think Fred made that. a good point right there. He said if you put it on a line, then you're saying that you're giving it to that position, and then if that position changes or something, you're kind of stuck. Is that kind of what you were trying, what you were mentioning, Fred? No, not really. Okay. I, I, if you're talking about the wage for X Y Z employee, and and the personnel plan says the person should make. $50,000 a year is just an arbitrary figure. Right. And the person is only making $35,000 a year. If you want to change that and move towards the 50, I think you put that in their pay, individual pay category in their department. Right. You don't put yeah. it here. Right. This okay. money represents, if you're going to give raises, this is the pool of money to give the raises from. And you can adjust it according to who you feel you can, get and, and there have been times where the board has actually said, okay, we're going to overspend the line. Uh, or underspend, or... Or underspend, uh, they've mm -hmm. done both. So. Or not give to certain individuals, or like right now, um, in 18, I believe, when we had done the budget, it was going across all the employees in the rec department, but then in the end, there was new people in all the positions, so they had all gotten bumped, so then they didn't get it. So we've adjusted it in right. situations like that before being on the merit line. Okay. In regards to the MRI study though, the ones that you guys voted to do the halfway on, those are on each individual um, employee's wage line right. for right now. That's where they are. That's how the budget is presented right now, Correct. which is perfect. Yes. Yes. Thank you. In the admin column, okay. in the administration okay. column. Mary Louise? If we're leaving this in place, there ought to be a stipulation that this would take effect April 1st. It's an understanding. Well, that's exactly like what the board has. The to, board has, the board has to vote it, and every time we've done this, the board has voted effective April one. Mm -hmm. Right. So I, they I don't gone expect back that will change at all. I just like to <clears throat> see them because it's supposed to cor correlate to the right. raises for contracts. every other contract. Yes. And so Absolutely. Yeah. And the twenty-seven um, thousand is calculated on thirty-nine weeks, right. okay. which would right. be April one. That's okay. how it's calculated. Do we need a line you. stipulated as merit pay if we're going to be dealing with individual employee salaries? Do we need it at all? Depends on how you're dealing with them. This is strictly for an annual increase in pay if the board feels one is justified. Correct. For non union. For, for, for non all non union yeah, employees. Non -union. Right. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else have any concerns about this one? Nope. Okay, next.